Hey there, I'm Protide. I apologize in advance if this video is a bit scuffed as I've never made this type of content before. There's been a lot of negativity surrounding Skull and Bones, mostly the game being criticized and compared to Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Sea of Thieves for obvious reasons. But this video is to highlight why I'm excited for Skull and Bones, some of its features and hopefully to engage and connect with other players like myself who are also excited to play this game. I signed up for the beta test way back in 2018 when the game got announced and then signed up for the Insiders this year and was very fortunate to be invited to a playtest. I've also been keeping up to date with the developer blogs, scouring as much information as I can and learning a fair amount. Skull and Bones is Ubisoft's open world pirate MMO with a staggering map size of 625 square kilometers. Populated with AI ships, wildlife and 19 other players, meaning that the possibility of endless threats are everywhere, from the biggest warship to the angriest hippo. And not to forget the dynamic weather system that moves around the map, Getting caught up in a storm means that you'll have to face harsh winds, monstrous waves, and the possibility of sinking from flood damage. And that's not even including if the AI factions or the other players are pursuing you. I think the option to opt out of PvP is actually a good choice, as this is a vertical progression game where the more you play, the better and stronger you'll become. So for the players who don't have the hours to sink into this game, they can enjoy the PvE servers without the looming threat of players sinking them who have a lot more game time. I very much like the idea of everyone having their own ship with your own AI crew. This means every decision and every action comes down to you, so you don't need to rely on others for firing the cannons, repairing the ship, or raising the sails. Granted, a lot of people would prefer to have a crew of friends, but I for one would prefer the responsibility of doing it myself. I think the customization options on Skull and Bones is superb, the ability to change the appearance of your ship or what your ship will be using to fight with, so if every ship can be made for what the player wants, which will make PvP even more interesting and every fight different from the last. This doesn't even include furniture, which can give you stat boost or stat boost for your allies around you. Because of this, it's going to create some fun ship builds. We can also change the clothing of our pirate, our sails, armor, weapons, and even have our own pirate layer, which is called the helm. Speaking of weapons, Skull and Bones have given us a fun arsenal to play with. Cannons, rockets, mortars, bombards, ballistas, Greek fire, and torpedoes. Each weapon has multiple variants, which creates a different playstyle depending on how you want to play. You could gear your boat up and go guns blazing, or you could stack healing weapons to support your allies at the cost of your offensive damage. You could have the best of both worlds and have healing and damage. These are the different weapon variants as we've been told, and apparently this isn't all of them. We have basic cannon with two variants, the demi cannon, which is a short range cannon that deals flood damage, and the long gun, which as the name suggests, is for long range shots and it deals blunt or fire damage. The ballista, that has multi bolts, which is highly inaccurate, but causes heavy damage and flood damage. And the twin winch, which travels further and deals more damage and inflicts piercing damage. And one was shown on Ubisoft Forward, the healing ballista. The mortar has the blasting mortar, which has an explosive radius and deals explosive damage. The Siege Mortar, which is stronger, has a smaller blast radius and deals crushing damage. And then the Repair Mortar, which heals ally ships. The Bombards are essentially like the Mortars. They have a Siege Bombard, a Healing Bombard, and a Fire Bombard. Rocket Launchers, which have two different variants. The Revolver Rocket, which has less shots but deals more damage and deals piercing damage and the field rockets, which have a longer range and a better projectile speed. The Greek fire, which is a giant flamethrower, it applies burning damage from a short range. And finally we have the torpedoes, the quick release, which causes flooding damage, and the explosive version, which causes explosive damage. Now we go on to the ships. We will have different classes of ships, the navigation ship, the cargo ship, and the firepower ship. Each different size of ship has their own pros and cons. For example, the smaller ships are able to sail upriver, while the bigger, more stronger ones cannot. I like this due to the fact that if you're on a PvP server and a larger ship is en route to sink you, you can just sail upriver and be out of range. Skull and Bones have told us that we are getting 12 ships at launch. I've only managed to find 9 stat cards. All categories of ships have a small, medium, or large. The first category is navigation ships. I'm going to apologize for my pronunciations of some of these ships. The first ship is the Bidar, which has better defense at half sails and has an increased chance to break sails. The Ganjar, which has an improved front weapon damage and an improved ramming damage. And then the Brigantine, which has an improved repair kit duration and weapon repair. Next is the cargo ships. The Hulk, which has automatic harvesting and an improved harvest rate. The Snow, which has an improved brace efficiency and improved hull hit points. Apologies for the pronunciation. 
the pad Wakang, which has an improved cargo capacity, more fire resistance, and takes less sail damage. Finally, the firepower ships, the sloop, which has a better brace efficiency, so takes less damage while bracing and has an increased broadside weapon damage, the sandbuck, which has an improved fire efficiency and deals more damage to burning ships. Finally, we have the brig, which has improved defenses on the anchor and also deals more damage to other ships' anchors. I did find a picture of the corvette, but unfortunately I couldn't find a stat card to go along with it. I am very excited and eager to play Skull and Bones on launch. I think there's a lot of fun to be had, either solo or with a group of friends. We've been told about dynamic events, the fact we can raid force, and hopefully more when Skull and Bones is released, but I'm looking forward to teaming up with my friends and my community members to have a blast. Speaking of which, I'm normally in the Skull and Bones category on Twitch, streaming in the evening around 8 to 10 BST, talking about the game and answering questions. Feel free to drop by and say hi. If you've managed to make it to the end of the video, I am eternally grateful for you taking the time to watch this. Please comment below what you're looking forward to in Skull and Bones.